Introduction to uh, GIS technology. Goals of this are to uh, get an understanding of some of the language and some of the fundamentals and the uh, concept of a lot of our maps being flat uh, and these maps being flat when a world is not exactly spherical. Okay, so in review, our goal with the GIS uh, system is to take the real world and represent it, represent it in a uh, format of, of raster layers and vector layers. Uh, an example here, uh, this is a map that was related to uh, lobster fishing off the coast of uh, Cape Cod. This is right here. So one of the, the features that we do is we send some folks out into the field. Uh, they acquire some samples to try to get an idea of the stage of the, uh, of the lobster. Um, the idea, of course, is to determine when the best time for, for fishing. We don't want to harvest the lobster when they're small. So we collect this data and you can kind of get a feel for here um, stage one, stage four, kind of how the how the uh, development of the um, fishery is, is occurring. Here we've taken satellite imagery. This is infrared Im imagery, which is giving us an indication of, uh, of the temperature of locations on the ground. And we can take that data, which is a raster uh, image, and extract uh, land use data on how that uh, same section is the land is being used. In a, in a business sense here, uh, this is a, um, a sales opportunity for selling property along the shoreline, cottages. Uh, and you can see what's happened is that there's a, a, a shape file that contains uh, photos. And the, the one photo that was selected was here, which gives us this image of that particular cottage on the, on the water. So the components of, of the GIS uh, include input devices, mass storage, rapid access. Uh, also, this would be web access and then archival storage. They feed a computer, which uh, with most mapping, you want a decent resolution display. Outputs are going to be uh, high quality web or uh, digital media. Some of the activities that you could be involved in in a, in a GIS uh, job, uh, you can be on the entry side, the editing side, the management of the data side, sort of an IT uh, kind of a thing. Uh, the analysis of that data, so there's a, a number of different things that we would be involved in in analyzing and producing output. Um, one of the biggest areas uh, recently is this uh, map serving. So our goal is to take the real world. So here's a, a, a view of a, an image of the real world and we take some phenomena that are uh, in existence in that world and we, we have to model those. So what we've done here is we've modeled these as polygons and it has the, a polygon which has then characteristics. So there would be a different type of characteristics for the different uh, types of wetlands that, that there may be, maybe open water, could be marsh, etc. So we, we have to take this um, structure here, which is uh, what we can see, and get it into a computer representation. Uh, here's a satellite image. And what we're going to do here is take the, uh, the boundary of this, uh, this image and turn it into polygons. And you can see some of the characteristics initially of decisions that need to be made. For example, here uh, you can see on the edge of this polygon, there's a little tab sticking out, a little reentrant there, a little cove on that particular island, and that's not represented here. Over here, it appears that there's a land bridge or perhaps a, a bridge per se uh, that doesn't show up over here. So that's a uh, representing the relationships. You know, are things adjacent? Um, are they in proximity? Um, how many objects are there really? Is it one or two polygons and so on? Uh, we have approximate. Have to approximate the the entities with objects. 
So here's a, a, a stand of, uh, I'll call these immature trees. And so those that next to a stand of mature trees. So here we may develop these into two separate polygons, one being uh, immature trees and the other being mature. Take lots of common objects. Here's a, a fire hydrant, which would become a point object. And these would be um, uh, attribute data. So attribute, again, is the, is the table that represents what's, what's going on. So we would identify the fire hydrant, how many flanges there are on the fire hydrant, the color of the fire hydrant, and what its rating is in terms of water. Uh, uh, quality. So it's not just that there's an individual point that there's a fire hydrant there, but that, you know, how many hoses can we connect and what kind of uh, flow rates can we get from that? Those are important data. So representing again the Earth's surface with uh, different layers, and each of these layers tends to have a theme or what we call thematic layers. Uh, it could be elevation data, road data, uh, soil data, wetland data, and so on, all representing and stacking up to give us a, a, a way of analyzing the Earth's surface. Uh, important that we establish a um, mathematical overlay so that we can do such things as measure uh, and so on. Uh, and so in a two-dimensional sense, uh, you know, sort of an X-Y relationship or a three-dimensional sense, uh, many of our uh, web mapping applications now are, are have gone to uh, actually having the third dimension so that we can we can work uh, with the elevation data within those maps. And obviously anything that we produce on paper will be two dimensional. Uh, getting a coordinate system uh, to begin to understand the relationship on the globe. Uh, we would use a spherical coordinate system where the origin is in the, uh, the center of the globe. And uh, we would get the uh, longitude values, uh, which would be angular values around uh, sort of the equator, and uh, latitude, which would be angular values um, as we go up, um, up on up on each hemisphere, either in a positive or negative sense, and then the elevation is uh, dictated as a, as a radius from the, the center of the Earth. Uh, latitude and longitude values can be uh, positive and negative, so the origin out here at uh, zero, zero degrees, so we, we've got uh, negative longitudes in this direction, positive in this direction, and obviously, on the on the other side here at 180 degrees, uh, it would uh, end up going uh, back to back to uh, positive. So positive zero to 180 degrees this way, and negative uh, zero to negative 180 degrees along that direction. Correspondingly, uh, in the uh, latitudes, that the northern hemisphere would be a positive latitude in. Uh, and so on. So uh, what you'll find in the United States is that the um, uh, longitudes will be negative because we're, we're kind of over here. So the deck vector models and raster models are the two common data methods. We have points, lines, and area. Uh, points being individual locations, line being the connection of individual locations, and area being uh, a complete cycle of, of, of points. So there would be five points here, one, two, three, four, and five to complete the, complete the polygon. Um, in a raster mode, uh, we can still represent lines and areas and points, but in a raster, those would be individual pixels. So here you can, you can kind of get a feel of this, this nice vertical line heading in this direction. It looks like a staircase over here. And again, a little bit more detail in terms of what's necessary to um, de define these. So we have lines that have nodes. Uh, the, the points uh, become nodes here. And then uh, polygons would be a collection of lines. Uh, we can often and often will uh, represent um, a single entity as three different things. So 
depending on what our, our, our interest is. So if we're just interested in the fact that there is a building there and it may have certain characteristics of, of, of uh, what's occurring inside it, well, we, we may just represent the individual location or customer location or, or vendor location or industry location as being an individual point. Um, we may want to uh, have some identification of the boundary of that particular building in terms of uh, it may be important that this next building next door is not too close, for example. Uh, and then lastly, we may want to calculate the square footage of the building. And so we, we may want to represent that as an area. So multiple representations of the same data is, off, is uh, quite common.